Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's April the 1st. Let's have a complete garden tour. I'll show you what's going on. Well, spring is in full force here and our garden is growing and things are looking promising. So I want to show you a beginning with our garlic bed and we'll move around the garden until we get to our trees and I'll show you uh, what's making me happy. Here's our garlic. It's uh, growing well. It's got a lot of dead leaves on the outer on the outer sides but I kind of dug down in here and checked and they're not bulbing up yet so it'll be a while. I don't expect these to bulb up until oh three or more two or three more months at least. Dill putting on flowers. Beautiful look at that. Yeah, that dill is a trooper, man. We'll keep that there as long as it still produces this wonderful stuff. Borage. This is a volunteer plant. Came up outside the garden bed. You can see it's got one-inch thick stalks down in there. I don't know if you can see. Look at that. This is a good pollinator-attracting plant. Bees love it. Fig trees are waking up. They're putting on leaves. Some that were knocked back a little harder during the last, uh, the last big freeze are tender up here but haven't budded out yet. But most of them are putting on leaves. Look at my citrus. A lot of blossoms on here. This is a, I think this is my blood orange. Let's see. Yes, this is a Sanguinelli blood orange. And I'm going to get some oranges off of that this year. Look at the blossoms. They're about ready to burst. These have put on leaves. Uh, fresh new growth. You can see how beautiful that is. The leaf miners have not found this yet in force, but they will. Over here, my mandarin, it's putting on lots of new growth as well. This tree gave me tons of mandarin oranges in December, and I'd come out and eat one every morning. I got a little potted plant down here, a little tomato plant. This little guy, I thought it had died, so I cut it back. But look, it's sending up some new growth right here. These little buds. I did not, I, I decided not to prune my figs this year. I wanted to see what they would do to recover before I prune them next year. So we're going to have some wild looking figs. Like this one's got both a tree habit and a bushing habit. But I'm going to have to choose one of those and uh, go with it because that pot won't support all this, all these branches on here. But look, I'm already getting the Breba crop. That's the first figs that pop out. So yeah, the fig trees looking good, nice and beautiful trim off some of this dead growth but uh, wow I'm encouraged here's one of my figs that didn't make it the Nero 6000 that's too bad I'm hoping that something will grow from the roots but you can see how loose it is in that soil I think that's toast my uh, variegated lemons put on lots of blossoms this one had dropped its leaves in protest of uh, the cold weather but it's putting them on again you can see all my citrus trees are putting on new growth and that makes me happy. I'm going to have to get in here and weed these pots and remulch them. But uh, the good news is the figs are all waking up. Even this one here. This one's an eager guy. Yeah, so those are the potted plants. Here I got my ginger. It died back. It got frozen down to the ground. But there's a big ginger root down in there that's sending up new growth. And these herbs, man, I planted these herbs last spring. And they just made it right through the winter. This is a onion that's going to seed here. This is a uh, an Asian variety of a uh, spring onion. So they don't bulb up. You use the green onions and that's been serving me well. That made it through the entire year. It's in its second year. Just come and cut some onions off of it. These little guys here are perfect. And look at all that rosemary. This is rosemary, thyme, oregano. I think that's marjoram. I'm not sure. It's about to flower. Yeah, so these herbs have been doing really well. The potted peppers and tomatoes, they're, they're doing just fine. They're starting to put on some, some more growth as the weather has warmed up. They've gotten pretty chunky. And uh, we're going to keep these here in pots and maximize our space by using not just the beds, but containers as well. I like to do that. Speaking of containers, I've got some over here. This is where we double planted or uh, interplanted our pepper along with this parsley here and uh, yeah so these will grow with their roots not going down too deep this will send its roots all the way to the bottom 
so uh, that's nice. My elderberry is waking up. This is an Adams elderberry. I've got another elderberry bush out front. This elderberry has not produced for me yet. It produced flowers last year, but they didn't come to fruition. So uh, I had to knock it back a bit because it's in a small container. Otherwise, these things will get enormous. This in my path is a tatsoi, an Asian green that went volunteer out here and seeded itself. And I'm going to let it put on some seeds and gather them. I had some basil seeds here. They didn't come up. I think that was old seed. Got a little squash plant there. That's a gray zucchini. And the rest of this bed is mostly tomatoes, different varieties. These I'm going to train up three main vines or so on these cages and keep them kind of short. I don't really care for tomato cages, uh, but you got to have them with these indeterminates. Those are all the bee teamers. And right in here, I'm going to plant my cucumbers. I haven't done it yet. Just been lazy. We've got a house renovation going on. There's my new door. So there's a lot going on. I haven't had time to deal with that. But I did plant some beans. These are my rattlesnake pole beans over here. And you can see they're just now coming up. That is a magical moment to me. I love to see when seeds come up. Yeah, there's going to be, there's a row here, a row here, a row here, and a row there. So we're going to have to get our trellis put in. Um, over here I've mulched with pine bark mulch. Lots of peppers planted out here. Got some poblano, some roaster peppers, some jalapenos, some cayenne. And they're looking healthy. Yeah, I didn't plant a larger diversity of plants this year. Um, I have a spot right there that I can probably plug something in that's different. I want to, I don't want to, you know, just all peppers and tomatoes, but I do want a lot of peppers and tomatoes. Now check this out. This is Samson, the daikon radish. Samson is going to seed. We're going to see what happens. If we can get some seeds from this uh, plant. This is the one who sprouted in this hole here and is stuck. I couldn't get it out. So we're going to see if it'll break the brick. If it'll swell so big that it, it actually breaks the brick. That's why it's called Samson. Long hair strength power we're gonna see if it'll break the brick so yeah the peppers looking healthy like i said the the leaf miners get my peppers every year you can see um, there's some leaf miner damage they've already found that out i've heard that you can squeeze them and and kill them so i tried that i don't see any further damage by those miners since i squeezed so maybe that does work i've never really messed with it i just you know let them go they don't seem to affect the pepper plants too much I have some beets coming up here. That's why this is not mulched. And because it's not mulched, among my beets that are coming up, you can see these are these are beets right here. I've also got these oxalis. And they're they're within my beets, so I can't really pull them. I've got some oxalis and nut sedge. Once those beets get big enough, I'll put some mulch around them and try to suppress some of this. All of this mulch here has cardboard under it and that is designed to suppress weeds. I've got a lot of weeds in these beds. We tried to remove a lot of the nut sedge. I can't imagine if we had not done that, how bad this nut sedge would actually be. Currently, it looks like, you know, it's all in here. You can't get this stuff out when you've got seedlings close by. Disturb everything. But you can, su you can suppress them with cardboard and mulch, and that's what I've done on this bed over here. I did a video on our muscadine corrective pruning. We've taken these muscadine grapevines way back here, and hopefully that will give us some some good growth this summer. Yeah, they look kind of sad when they're like this, don't they? But that's what you have to do with them. I've got some zucchini back here. This is a Costata Romanesco zucchini. It's a stripy guy. I'm going to try to get some zucchini before the vine borers show up. <clears throat> I've planted some gray zucchini here. Uh, just a, as a demo, it's too close to that one, but I'm going to leave them there until I know that one's going to take off because that zucchini plant over there has been struggling a bit. So these are kind of bee teamers and we got a weed. Need to get some mulch on this bed too. Here are some Korean peppers and they're, they're little guys here. These are, what are they called? Gochujang chili peppers. And they're supposed to be nice uh, Korean hot chili next to a couple other pepper plants here. These are my Edox tomatoes, and they're already flowering. It's about time I get these pruned and on a string. So what we will do with these guys, we'll take off these lower branches 
and we will train we'll take this out and this will be our main vine this is a sucker that will become another main vine if you let it with this growing method I'm going to employ we don't want these so we'll come and we'll take this entire bit out and the goal is to leave about 12 leafing branches on the plant near the top and everything else you trim down to a bare vine and you just leave behind your fruiting spurs I guess on a tomato they're not called fruiting spurs but this plant develops these trusses these great trusses and you'll see that in a couple of months how wonderful they they produce so a couple of these out here are second year plants from seed I saved last year these are hybrids and they're bred for certain traits and qualities but I saved some seed to see what happens as an experiment I think those two on the end are F2 varieties so they're uh, second generation we're gonna see if we get any regression back to one of the parent varieties right now I can't see any difference in all these edox plants there are eight of them boy we gotta get our trellis built got some strawberries blooming like crazy in here there's a little strawberry there real dense uh, this variety of strawberry is an ever bearing variety so uh, we've got some strawberries there we've got some over here I think I'm gonna be into some strawberries yeah container plants plugged in a couple other bell peppers here just because I had this soil this was uh, soil that has been in this pot for years and it was growing last year, it was growing uh, electric daisies, those uh, toothache plants. So we might get some of those come up and volunteer in there. But uh, there we go, more pepper plants. So that's the state of this side of my yard. Early spring is always a nice time. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying this garden. Let's go look at the trees. Lucy, the Meyer lemon tree, is loaded with blossoms. Look at that. We almost lost Lucy. Had to cut Lucy down. You can see the old trunk down there, and I need to remove that part. But uh, yeah, Lucy grew from above the graft union, and so now we have all this wonderful, these Meyer lemons coming in. And I can see my first pest of the year, a leaf-footed bug in there. Good grief. But uh, yeah, these smell delicious when these blossoms open up. You can see the old leaves get hit by leaf miners really bad in our area. But all this new growth, yeah, that'll carry her through. That makes me happy. We're going to trim Lucy up for shape. But, uh, you know, I'll take off some of this stuff here. But this coming, you know, look at that. Man, that's awful. In the summer, I'm going to prune Lucy a little more heavily. Summer pruning stunts growth. And we want these trees to be about that big. Back, maybe a little bit bigger. When the fruit comes on these higher branches, it, they, it weighs down and you can get it. But anything bigger than, you know, six feet tall, seven feet tall, that's too big for this backyard. Look at my apple trees. My apple trees opened up. This one already blossomed. And uh, we're training this one. We're putting our strings here to keep our, our branches horizontal or down facing. That uh, encourages apples to fruit more. And that's how we're going to grow these trees. This is an Anna. It is a pollinator of my Golden Dorset. Yeah, they, they pollinate each other because their flowers open at the same time. This one's a little older. It was a replacement tree, actually. Look at this guy. What do we have here? This tree is called Shell of Alabama. And we notched where we wanted to force out growth and removed the rest of the buds that we didn't want. And this is what we got. We got the growth going in the direction that we want and this is going to be a modified central leader system leave a little bit of growth at the top yeah that that's shaping up real nice that little pruning we did worked out really well back here in my corner that needs mowing really bad my uh blackberries looking great man all that new growth that green in there i hope to get some berries off of that strawberries down in here they uh, are doing really well look at them making strawberries for me that's encouraging yeah that's beautiful I uh, gave them some fur man look at all those strawberries that's awesome that's a tiny little plant though uh, these plants did not like this soil very much uh, number one I put orange oil on an ant bed over here and nearly killed this poor guy but uh, it popped right back this year it's little but it's sending out these runners and rooting itself. I've also got some blackberries coming up here. Yeah, that's cool. 
goji berry I trimmed it way back so it's all nice and green goji berries got to have some of those I have never had one off of this plant look at this nice tender growth these will get real woody and you can propagate these goji berries real easily if you want to just take cuttings and yeah that's what it'll look like that's last year's wood check out the onions there is a noticeable difference in those onions compared to those onions that tells me the soil over here is better soil there's more fertility than down here I filled this bed with uh, logs and sticks and stuff down at the bottom in a hugel culture manner and you can see this guy's hard this guy right here is hardly any bigger than he was when I put him in yet right next to him there's this huge dude and down here well I mean you can see some of them are starting to even bulk up down there you can see right down in there we've got some bulkage that's good so I fertilized you've got to fertilize onions pretty heavily uh, but these guys just aren't catching up. I don't remember what kind of soil I put in here, but all the soil that was in here was depleted. So I fertilized it, I amended it, but for some reason this side, not doing as good as that side. I wonder perhaps if it is a sunlight issue. When the sun comes down, uh, goes down, it goes down over there. My house may cast a shadow right here, I don't know. But at least they're onions and at least I'm gonna get some. Check out my little peach tree. It's about 20 inches tall. We cut it off right there, and we want these, these branches to be our main scaffolds for growing. I thought this one would be a, a viable branch, but it's dead, so unfortunately we're left with just a couple of them here. I've got two branches coming out here, so that's good. We can kind of train this one out more toward me and have an open center. An open center is what we're going for with this peach tree. We're going to keep it small. Got some growth down here at the bottom. Pluck that right off. We don't need that down there. Yeah, this is a uh, early grand peach. Early grande. Nice, huh? When I say open center, this is what I'm talking about. Here is my, my Santa Rosa plum. And you can see this plum tree is going crazy with leaves. It was a little slow. I didn't have much hope for it. Last year, for some reason, it did not like the growing season, and it only produced leaves like this right out here at the end of its branches. But uh, this year, it's, you can see it's putting on lots of leaves. It's even putting on some blossoms already. So uh, I've got some little plums in the in the making. So this is an open center. You can see the we're keeping the center open. We trained this tree to four main branches here. And anything that starts growing inwardly, we take off. So uh, all this growth here is probably going to shoot up some stuff in the middle. But yeah, that tree, we cut it off at 18 inches. We're going to keep it small. This year should probably tell us if we're going to like this plum or not. Here is my single seed challenge. This is a hot Portugal chili pepper that was sent to me by, uh, sent to me from John up at Will It Grow. Doing all right. He's just kind of been neglected, so you can see it's kind of laggy. It was in with my backup B-team pepper plants, and they got blown around by the wind and fell on him and knocked him over. So we need to get this guy potted up soon. It's about time. Let's do that now. I got this pot. It's about as small as I'll go for a pepper. And I put some fresh potting soil in here and some earthworm castings because I want to baby my single seed challenge along. And we're going to plant it a little bit deeper to kind of bury that that stem up, give it some support. So I'll, I'll bury it up to that leaf node. But I'm going to take that little leaf off. Make sure you keep your labels around. Here we go, single seed challenge going in its permanent home. You can see the roots are all the way down there at the bottom. So that's good to see. This is my... Is it my second or my third single seed challenge attempt of this year? My first one failed. I don't think that's deep enough. And I just tore off some of the roots. Not good. Alright, orient this guy the right way. And pack it down. There we go. This soil is pretty moist. So I'll water it in later. But there we go. My single seed challenge. 
This is my second attempt, it says. Hot Portugal chili pepper started on February 8th. It is April the 1st. That's not a lot of growth. But out here in its new home, new soil, nice nutrition in here, this thing will take off. Get that soil settled in there. Hey, thank you for joining me today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Hey, if you need a good source for seeds, try Seeds for Generations. Use the link down below in the description and you'll be supporting our channel. So also, if you'd like to participate in the single seed challenge, it's not too late. Well, we have nine months left in the year. I'll put a link right up there to the single seed challenge introduction video that'll introduce the concept to you and teach you all you need to know about growing a single seed and tracking its lifestyle and joining up with all the gardeners around the world who are participating in the single seed challenge. You'll see a hashtag in the title of this video. And if you click that hashtag, single seed challenge 2022, you will be able to watch all the other people taking part in this wonderful challenge. So, hey, thank you for joining us today on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.